sounds because it's a pain in the ass to hear that on the recording or on the live actually it would be better if you go completely on play modus and completely out like that we don't have interference with the sound if you really need to tweet because it's so important uh, then okay but yes be careful make sure that we don't hear any sound thank you If they not put uh, on camera on, we have no picture. Yeah, just put my camera on. Is this, is this okay? Yeah. If if we have, yeah, uh, directly we can we can put them all on.
prima Daphne vi dico parole, fuori stream. That's a good idea. That's okay. I like sparkling. Yes, 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 we don't have to do it again. It's coffee. No, it's white. You put something else. Marisa, Marisa, do you want some? This is a collaboration, right? Yeah, that's your secret. I must tell you that I'm always, always. So you were having wine? Yeah. Unbelievable. I was telling him that. Actually, we don't do as much water into the same time. Maybe just one quick thing that I, I don't need to tell you how to speak in front of cameras, but it should be really short, I mean, you know, all of that. It's not the prime time TV, 30 seconds out, I do want a bit of conversation, a bit of talk out, and uh, it's a qualified audience, so we can indulge in some reflection. But of course, between one and two minutes, uh, more than that, I would have to come in and catch you, because it's still... Yeah. Really Either you catch you, or you give us wine, and we can anything. The other thing is, I will ask questions, but uh, if we develop a, a horizontal conversation, uh, that's also very interesting. So feel free to intervene, of course, respectfully, but I don't know how to tell you that, uh, without me asking you questions or giving you the floor. Maybe you can just sign to me if you want to intervene if someone is speaking, mm -hmm. but really feel free to have a uh, flexible geometry so around the table. You're not just answering my questions. <laughs> These Italians. <laughs> 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 okay. Can I have Water, water, water. I, do we have a manifesto? It would be good to have like a printed version. I just don't copy, I'm afraid. I can download it on my. Yeah, that I have also. <laughs> so, we, so we don't have it in one copy of it? We will have it in our minds. Yes, indeed. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to get a color change, so we are so engaged. I'm not sure which version I have in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's so many. <laughs> 7.34. Yeah, do, do you know? What was my favorite, actually? Does anybody have, uh, uh, or like, know something about the Wi-Fi wi here? Like, I, I don't know. I don't think there is a Wi-Fi. There is no? No. I don't know. Excuse me, can I use your just for the first 
Uh, air, air mode, flight mode. I have no way of doing that because I don't even know. Jamie, can you can you just facilitate the language with the link to the live stream so that we can see the question? Well, if if you actually, um, if I find it somewhere, huh? no, I. I tweeted it this morning, so it should be in my tweet. Uh, if you look on the talk reel uh, Twitter account, it should be the top, uh, the top tweet. Okay, hang on. Yes, let's go on, let's go on. Okay, okay so talk reel. Start with a few words, and uh, first of all, welcome everyone to um, Volksbühne. Thanks to Volksbühne for hosting the talk reel tonight. We're just waiting for a few more chairs, so um, we can start the, the show uh, when, the, when the chairs have arrived, because it's quite important that everyone actually has a seat, so that there's no moving around. Um, also, just a few words, um, who's hosting that show? Uh, we are European Alternatives. European Alternatives is a transnational organization that works uh, across Europe. Or and just copy this and tweet. So the link, where's the link? Who's founded in 2007 in London. We run a transnational project. I mean, the practice of transnationalization of politics is one of our aims. Our slogan is democracy, equality, and culture beyond the nation state. So in fact, being part of this launch of the movement tomorrow is is an important one, and uh, you know, now we are going to have the discussion about in fact what this is, you know, what this can bring, and, and what are the next steps that uh, we all should be taking together to to uh, to bring transnational politics in Europe together and transnational democracy. So um, um, we have to wait maybe just a few more minutes, but then I'm looking forward to uh, talk with you. Thank you, Dr. You don't want it? I can make it red. <laughs> can draw. Using your lips. Okay. It should have gone. Sending tweet. Come on. Send. Yes, and now back to flight mode, right? It really is. Yeah. Ask some different questions to all of you, but the first one it's very fast and it's the same to all of you. Mm -hmm. And it's what I you would don't, say. I don't want to hear it. Ah. <laughs> no, no, let's just pretend. I will speak louder afterwards, don't worry. No, no, he wants to be spontaneous. He no, doesn't want to be told. Oh, you want to hear it? No, okay, no, no. fine. No, no, I'm kidding. If, if you, if you <laughs> prefer so to know. Mm -hmm. When we finish all, like, if you want, we can make, you, make a question to you know, our uh, audiences, more or less composed by activists. Mm -hmm. Just a question about the DM, they, they, they can answer it. I'm a, you, you do whatever you want. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm Just very happy. a question for, for them, something that you want to ask to them. Oh, I uh, pose a question to them. Good point. But yes. Uh, people are going to put questions themselves. As well. And we'll try to ask a few of them. Let's see how it uh,
she will be each other will be. Valentina is from uh, FIOM, the Italian Metal Workers Trade Union. She's the international representative. I, I know, but we haven't met. Yeah, we, yeah, haven't we tried met. to keep. No, we haven't met. We yeah. were close to. Close the a number of times. Yes. Uh, close shave. <laughs> <laughs> and Vladimir is, uh, is the leader and founder of Critica Politicina, which is one of the most, the most important movements yes, yes. east of Vienna. Of course. East of Vienna, I like that. <laughs> well, what was weather? <laughs> but still. What was? Weather. Yes. Between a rock and a hard place. That is how many of us feel today. Stuck between a European Union that is undemocratic and failing and national states that are equally undemocratic and failing. It is very clear to us that the European Union as it is today, the Europe of the status quo, is untenable. It is stumbling from crisis to crisis and unable to address any of them. At the same time, it is equally clear to many of us that the nation state cannot be the solution to this situation. There is no return to the glory days uh, of national sovereignty and national primacy in order to address issues that clearly go beyond small or medium-sized nations such as climate justice, tax justice, trade justice, or the refugee crisis that we see on our screens on a weekly basis uh, this, these days. We refuse that the option is only one between two equally failing options. We want to hold dear the idea that there is a third alternative and a third path of hope and ambition. To try and chart this path is the task of today's debate. We are having this debate at a particularly important moment in the context of the launch of a new movement for the democratization of Europe, DiEM, and we're having this conversation with a spectacular cast, uh, if I may use that expression. Uh, Yanis Varoufakis on my left, uh, who is uh, the initiator of, uh, of DiEM, Marisa Matias, who is a member of the European Parliament uh, for Bloco de Esquerda of Portugal and a presidential candidate in the elections only a few weeks ago, Slavomir Sirakovsky, who is the founder and leader of Kritika Politicna, one of the most inspiring political movements uh, of Poland and of Eastern Europe, active also in Ukraine, which I think is something worth uh, underlining. And Valentina Orazzini, who has uh, a very important past in the social movements, Europe-wide and in Italy, and is today the international representative of FIOM CGL, the Metal Workers Union of Italy. Maybe I want to start with a very simple question to all of you. Uh, what should we say to someone watching us today and feeling this uh, squeeze of a failing Europe and a failing nation state? What is the hope and the ambition and the desire that we can return to such a person watching us today? Maybe, Yanis, we start, we start with you and then we go around the table. We need to do something very simple and very radical to put Demos back into democracy. For decades now in the European Union, and in particular in the last 10, 15 years, especially after the eruption of the Euro crisis, uh, the Demos has been well and truly 
being withdrawn from democracy. We have had a very menacing process of depoliticizing political processes. And when you depoliticize a political process, you end up with toxic politics, terrible economics, and a vicious cycle between authoritarianism and recession, which then leads to more authoritarianism, because only through more authoritarianism can the Troika and, the, and Brussels and Frankfurt and so on maintain the failed policies. The only alternative to uh, this pseudo-dilemma, as you put it, Renzo, between uh, retreating to the cocoon, to the bo bosom of a failing nation state, or surrendering to a, the U European, to the democracy free zone that is the European Union, is a surge of democracy throughout Europe that um, spans from Finland to Portugal, from Ireland to Crete, uh, from east, west, north, south. And what's the hope that you brought in with presidential elections only a um, couple of weeks ago? <laughs> <laughs> hope. Or in your work in the the hope was hope, uh, I hope. <laughs> so, but I think that's, yeah, we have to bring back demos, but we have to bring back also political power because uh, political power is not in the hands of citizens anymore, uh, although we might think so, and uh, I think this is a crucial thing. I also think it's simple uh, in any case, but uh, we didn't won the battle of common sense. We lost it, so I think that we need to go back to the concrete problems of people li people's lives. And that's something that sometimes seems to be so far away. But I would say to recover politics, to recover democracy, but to go back to the concrete problems of people's lives would be a crucial thing to do. And it's not so crucial sometimes that we have definitive answers to everything. Mm -hmm. we, we need a roadmap, but we need to have roads first in order to have a roadmap. And we still need to build on uh, some of those roads. I would say as a main task uh, is to go back to the basics, to the concrete lives of people, so to, to have as broad as possible a common front against austerity. Th this is, I think, what is killing now democracy also in Europe. Maybe on the common front against austerity, Valentina, I can bring you in. Uh, you work for a trade union, but you've also been an activist, for instance, in Blockupy. Uh, what is this third alternative for you? Well, for the trade union point of view, what I can say that actually, I mean, going back to the national uh, level, uh, is actually something that, I mean, in, in the labor market, is something that has been shown since the beginning, that, uh, I mean, the capital has uh, organized itself in a, in a global way. The point is how trade unions and how pe the person, now the movements are able to globalize themselves, how to give common response, because, I mean, until now, the point is, if you wake up in a place where you can be blackmailed from a company that is based I mean, elsewhere, that is uh, asking you to decrease your condition, instead they would move the production. Anything that you can do is trying to go for common demands and a common struggle. So I think and th they are all linked, the fact that we are on a turning point, the fact that we have to reinvent the role of the trade unions. So beside, I mean, the fact that we, I think that in a, in a more effective way of, of the politics, we had you know, the challenge to go to, to recognize the, 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 the process and to give common, a, common, uh, a common struggle on that. And we were not able until now. So I think the main task is now to build the real you know, uh, trade unions movement that it's open and linked. So why does uh, two aspects as linked with the one of, I mean, Blockupy as one of the space in which, I mean, I can bring the experience of my trade unions that is active on the European side, but also in the national one, that has been, has to be open in a social, you know, process uh, and go back to the regions or reinforce the solidarity pact among the person, among the workers. And so I think that the point is how to reinforce and to go back to the region of solidarity and social justice on the fundamental law of, you know, of Europe. I kept you last because Poland has been in the headlines these days uh, for representing anything but the hopeful scenario they were trying to draw and Eastern Europe has been in the headlines for such having returned okay. at the center of the contradictions that are falling uh, in mm -hmm. the European Union today. Uh, what do you say to contrast that? Uh, let me come back to Poland uh, later. Um, I will say something because uh, you asked uh, about or like you wanted us to talk to the people who not necessarily are convinced or can be convinced easily. Um, 
so, so and, and EU is the stake, so we really think that EU still can work and still balance the economic glo globalization that can save our politics, democratic processes and everything. I agree fully with this, I always agree with this. So let's, 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 uh, let's recall the question that was the most important question in the moment when people established EU. Was it about uh, welfare? Not, not really, it can help with this, but it was not welfare, that was the aim. Was it about democracy? Not really, it was not democracy, that was the, the main aim. The main aim was to prevent wars. And this is why we wanted to have this big reconciliation process between Germany and France and other countries, Eastern, Western, okay? And, um, and let me now ask you, uh, where people sacrifice their lives for EU? In Greece, in Germany, in Italy? No, they did it only in one place, in Maidan, in Ukraine. A hundred people died, shot down under European flags. And I think that if EU uh, has a mission, and if we have a mission, we have to think not only about our welfare, equality, freedom, and all those values. I fully support it. I, I will discuss it with you uh, later. But don't forget about this, uh, about Ukraine. They are exactly the same people like us, like you, like you, like you, okay? They want to be part of this uh, of this. It, I think it's a big obligation for us, okay? I'm not Ukrainian. Poland and Ukraine has a bloody history, okay? I also think about Russian citizens. I hate Putin, but I love Russian citizens and Ukrainian comrades. They, they know it and they are aware of it. But like, let's put at the stake also their freedom and equality and independence, which is a condition for it. Yes. Let me try and, uh, and, and provoke you a little bit, Yanis. Um, over the last years, we've seen um, a, a, a multiplication of manifestos and appeals, mm -hmm. uh, each drawing an ideal Europe that they aspired to and demanding that uh, people rise to achieve that. What's different now? What is the ambition behind Diem beyond being yet another manifesto? Uh, and what is, in your mind, the path that is going to transform Diem into a political process impacting on reality and not simply on newspaper headlines? Well, that's a great question. Um, the answer is located in the year 2015, because 2015 was a, is going to go, go down in history as a significant year for a number of reasons. First, we had the Athens Spring. Uh, we had a democratically elected government, which dared do something that had not been done before, to go to Brussels and to Frankfurt and say, no, uh, your program has been implemented by the establishment in my country, in our country, for the last six years, and it was a spectacular failure. Never in the history of macroeconomics have we had such a huge failure. Thirty percent of national income just going, you know, just disappearing. Uh, you know, unemployment going from eight to twenty-eight uh, percent. Let's work out new parameters. And the response was, "We'll shut down your banks until you asphyxiate and you die." Very simple. This is a major uh, violation of basic rules of liberal democracy, of bourgeois democracy. You don't have to be a Marxist, a left-winger, a green, a uh, radical, Absolutely. to realize that this, he, when Wolfgang Schäuble in the Eurogroup says explicitly, democracy cannot be allowed to change anything. So this, this is like the heart of the European Union, especially given that his view prevailed. Uh, the, 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 the core of the European Union, the establishment of the European Union, effectively banned democracy, effectively admitted that there is no such thing as democracy. So there is no democratic deficit in the European Union. There is as much democratic deficit in the European Union as there is an oxygen deficit on the moon. It doesn't exist. Okay? Let's not talk in terms of deficit. Now this, the, the crashing of the Athens Spring, it, it, it brought out. Now you have uh, people who normally would have nothing to do with us leftists and radicals and activists who actually see this now, and they feel very worried about that. They can be even center-right people, liberal bourgeois, who have an, a commitment to democracy, and suddenly they realize that it doesn't exist in the European Union at the heart of the decision-making that determines the future of Europe and their own future. At the same time, we had the abysmal uh, response to the refugee crisis in Europe, with the possible ex exception of Chancellor Merkel uh, at some point in time. 
doesn't last long, but nevertheless, it was a good moment. But come on, uh, let's face it, she was the only defender of this policy. I wrote an article in France saying, so don't, saying, don't that, saying, saying, saying that I'm proud to be European good. because of Merkel's position, so you don't need to tell her that. But so you, you see that this battle of common sense that Marisa was hinting at is a battle that is now uh, playable because of the conditions that have been triggered in 2015. You see that there is a potential resurgence of mobilization. The, the way I see it is this. Uh, we've had many wonderful movements in Europe and globally against globalization, again on the Blockupy. Uh, it is time that we have an overarching uh, narrative on what all these movements must uh, or should belong to or utilize to bring in the people who are sitting as we speak on their couch, not watching this, but watching some reality show trying to forget their anxieties, their fears, the fact that they may not have a job tomorrow or not enough money to pay the rent or the electricity bill. These are the people that we need through coalescing together as different movements, utilizing the fact that almost everybody knows that there's something rotten in the heart of the European Union at the moment, not just left wings, left wingers and radicals. Valentina, so th that is why we need the democracy in Europe movement. That's, all, that's why we're doing it, for no other so reason. Think, can I ask Valentina, how, how do you respond to this from someone who has been fighting for very similar goals, also the level of social movements in the past few years? Do you see this potential in, in the current phase? I, I mean, I see the proposal, so I see it as a tool. I think that it's, a, it's the spirit is to be, you know, in a disposal of uh, the existing process. I think because the I think that the, the the better way to go to go on is starting from what the existence. I mean, so we don't, don't have because sometimes we have, you know, this feeling that we all we have start to start from scratch, and um, because now we are dealing with blue Pie, but I mean, Fiam was involved in social process until 2001. I was until present as trade units also in Genova. So I think that we have an ongoing process. And the point is that sometimes, you know, the, we have to, um, to connect the desire, you know, to, to make people participate to the, to, the, um, to the debate, to the political debate, to, we have to revamp the participation, democracy. So in this, I, I mean, I, I value as a, as a proposal because for since now, I mean, it's a manifesto. So I, um, I, 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 I'm looking for what will be in next years, what we will be able to do together. What, why, we, I mean, as, as a trade unions, we felt that, I mean, beside the manifesto and the fact that it was important to be there fighting against the ACB, it was, it, it was the evidence symbol of something, you know, you should have fought as a European citizen because, I mean, the great value of the, demonst the, the demonstration we took part in the 18th of March, it was the fact that it was an European demonstration. So they had the, the Blokupai had the value to promote something that was European. It was not simply addressing to the Germans. So uh, why it was, you know, the, the Italian workers were able to, b to be there and feel commons with other cities. It was an European demonstration. So the point is to let, I think, um, an open space, you know, that anyone for the role have and, and it's playing can comes together. Because the point is that uh, it's also linked to the process we launched in Italy. You know, this is a starting process was launched by the trade unions in Italy that we say that there is a need to coalize struggle. So the point is that we cannot, you know, act separately. So the point is, I, so in, in, in this way, I consider your offer as an offer to, you know, uh, work together and try to arrive together to achieve uh, a common strategy. Um, and clearly working together means working together in the variety of contexts of the European Union. It's been noticeable in the movements of the last few years that uh, Central and Eastern European countries and their movements have been less present, uh, for instance, in movements such as Blockupy, than traditional Western countries. I, I don't think we should discuss as to why that is, but what mm -hmm. do you think can build uh, in, this, mm -hmm. in this discussion a bridge with uh, uh, what is a core part of the European Union today? I, I don't want to have only reservations today, but uh, even in the manifesto, the, the, you know, the Europe ends up in Leipzig. Um, in the axis that you, that you mentioned, uh, the Western Eastern is like from, from Lisboa, I think, to Leipzig. You're too German, Mr. Varoufakis. Uh, I've never been uh, accused of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pleased to hear it. Yeah, I wanted to uh, your pleasure. Um, yeah, yeah, so like, and I'm, it's not that I'm a local patriot and I'm thinking only about Poland and Ukraine. I mean, Poland, I'm top anti-Polish 
Polish anti-patriot. <laughs> You can believe me, trust me. But, um, but I, I, I just want to save the project, and we are very different. And the, the, those differences are, you can take advantage of it, but there are many disadvantages of it. And, and the important thing is to remember that if you want to have a democracy, you need Democrats. Uh, and also, if you have liberal democracy, you need some liberals. In, in, Poland is a good example because like the, the, you know, the, the majority of people, or not necessarily the majority, but in Hungary is another good example. In Hungary, really, people voted for, you know, disestablishment of democracy, liberal democracy at least. Okay, so democracy can be very bad. The big problem with antisemitism started when the empires collapsed and people got the power to kill. And the first thing what they did, they killed as many Jews as were possible. All right. <laughs> so democracy can be also a very. It, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're gonna. You know, everybody will in, immediately have the. You know, they will want to have equality, freedom, trade unions, and everything. No, they can also vote for austerity policy and for the worst things you can imagine. And then what? So this. So one of my suggestions would be to. Um, um, no, not to stick towards, but we agree with this everybody, not to stick to manifestos, we agree to with this everybody, but or if not to build institutions, then at least to use institutions, all right, that are existing, because there are so many movements, so many NGOs, so many institutes, too many probably. So, so maybe th this movement can like um, efficiently find partners to, uh, to, to, to trigger the process of like shaping some attitudes, and attitudes that we think can guarantee the proper vision of the European Union, like the, the engagement, the community, the you know sharing obligations together, understanding each other. We are really different, like you know Poles, Hungarians, and Greeks, and uh, and, and you know Portuguese is really different. And Let me take that only, one, it's not one, one step. Other one step forward to continue the discussion on how is change achievable. An institution is also the national institutions of, or national of government. Uh, you just ran uh, for the presidency of a, of, a, of, a, of a country of the European Union. And many of the policies that we find ourselves uh, fighting against are policies that emanate from the European Council, which is a representation of national governments and heads of states. Uh, what do you think is the role, if there is a role today, of national governments in participating in a discourse such as the one that Yanis was introducing? I think there are a lot of questions already uh, in the table. I, I just want to, I don't, I, I'm going to answer you directly, but I, I just want to go back a little bit in order to, I, I do understand the point that you were trying to put and I think that was more or less shared here in this table, which has to do with the fact that we always, when something new is coming, we always put the question, uh, uh, what is the point of having new and perhaps ever smaller European platforms and what is the way of doing a joint um, platform in order that we can sum to each other and not to multiply and to create, generate more fragmentation because we have that problem probably because I'm Portuguese and I know a lot <laughs> of our history during the 70s. I think there's no such a thing as too many movements or too many parties or too much democracy. Uh, so that's not uh, the question for sure, but I think this is a key point that we have to put into, into, into the table. But in any case, uh, we are talking about national, European, and uh, I'm sorry, I don't know, perhaps because I'm in the European Parliament for seven years, I don't know what means European anymore. Uh, Perhaps I should know better, but I don't know, and every day I know at uh, least because, okay, we can talk about rules, institutions, but there's a model for every situation, and believe me, it is very difficult to classify European or whatsoever what is happening nowadays. But saying things, I, I think that um, we have different situations, of course, in different countries. It's not so easy for me, and I'm internationalist for sure, but it's not so easy for me just to uh, use this dichotomy between national and European, uh, even because national means a lot of different things in different European countries. For instance, national in France means something, in Spain means something completely different. It's a state of nations, and nationalism means a different thing. But saying things, um, even that I'm 
totally against the common uh, ground that we think about nationalism in this in this table. I think I think then we cannot do the same kind of analysis when we think about, for instance, sovereignty, because then we have a problem. Of, and it's not a fake dilemma. It's real. There's a real problem of sovereignty in the current European Union. So we have lack of legitimacy of the, the decisions which are taken at the EU level. And I do somehow feel that uh, some of the major ground of legi legitimacy that we get now come from the national context. And, uh, and when you say decisions coming from the European Council, of course, <coughs> but based in, with, in which legitimacy, honestly, you don't have it. And so if you find and try to find some kind of legitimacy, you find it at, at the national level. So I think that we still need to have an important debate between these common struggles and the things that we want to do. And I would love to, to, that we could manage to have a common front anti-austerity. I would say that would be the key issue, as I said previously. I don't, we don't have to apologize to to say bad things about European institutions and about uh, uh, the rules and about, sure. we don't have to apologize. I think that we have to confront them directly. I, I think that's, a, that's the, the, the only way in these moments, if you want some progressive way, and, and going back to, as I said, the concrete problems of people, and to have a common front against austerity, you have to confront directly the European institutions, you have to confront directly the rules, which are different for each country, but no. I wouldn't put, um, I don't know how to frame this debate, but I think we still have some margin to, to bring sovereignty again, because that's a way also of reinforcement of democracy. Ennis, can I ask you to, to respond to that? I'd uh, like to, to uh, a couple of things, because yeah. now the, the, the discussion is becoming <laughs> very interesting, actually. So there's so much, as you said, so much on the table. Uh, firstly, on the question of sovereignty, you're absolutely right, Marisa. Um, in a federation, you take sovereignty from the state level and you shift it to the federal level where legitimacy uh, lends it the authority to make decisions on behalf of everyone. In Europe, what we've done is we've taken national sovereignty and put it in a black hole yeah. and it has disappeared. So you end up with, uh, what is the problem with, I mean, why am I claiming that the EU is a completely democracy-free zone? Because there's no sovereignty. You have uh, leaders of our countries, uh, finance ministers in the Eurogroup and ECOFIN and so on, they get together they have been elected by national parliaments, uh, which have no sovereignty over the decisions that their finance ministers and leaders will be making in Brussels, in Frankfurt. Right? So even though it is true that these people who go there have been elected, the body that makes the decisions is not answerable no, no. to anyone. No, but there's, to no, anyone. there's no democratic the, control. It. That's right. Yeah. The, it, it, no one can fire it. No one can fire the European Union Council, not the prime minister of Poland. And yeah. the also the double so, news, the and, and this, is, this is important. Allow me to finish this yes. point. Because what happens is, uh, our ministers then come back, and all of them, all of them, denounce the decision that just made. They said, oh, it wasn't a good decision, but it was the best I could do. I was outvoted, or you know, I couldn't have pushed my point. And the national parliament cannot censure them for being in a minority of one or two. Yeah? So you, you made a point that I disagree extremely wholeheartedly with. Mm -hmm. uh, firstly, fascism did not happen democratically. It happened as a result of the dissolution of democracies in the 1930s. Uh, and I didn't say Let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. And, and, and it's a mistake to confuse democracy with majority rule. Majoritarianism is not the same thing as democracy, but this is a big discussion. I, I wanted to, 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 to make this point. I also disagree with you wholeheartedly with every sign you of my being, that the Hungarians, the Poles, the Germans, the Greeks are different. We're not. We're exactly the same. We have greater differences within Greece than we have between Greece and Germany, between Greece and Poland. And if we do not begin from that foundation, uh, Europe is, is doomed. Uh, and one last point, if I may, in relation to Marisa. Uh, at the moment, we have seven years of continuous crisis as a result of the failure of our leaders in the Eurogroup, in the ECOFIN, in the European Union Council, 
to coordinate even and no one is censoring them so let me give you a very quick definition of democracy democracy Explain is quick. very quickly very quickly democracy is a, a system of grand government this is some uh, plagiarizing from tony ben where uh, the electors can ask their rulers four questions uh, what powers do you have who gave them to you how are you using them and how can we get rid of you and that we do not have in europe can, can well, it's not easy to to teach what is democracy the Greek citizen. Um, <laughs> I claim <But> no <laughs> privilege but still, <laughs> to but understanding still, and knowing democracy. But still, I would say that this is why I distinguished precisely democracy from liberalism. Democracy answers different question. It answers the question who rules, who governs. Liberalism answers the question um, how free you are Okay, so theoretically, totalitarian democracy is possible. And it's not only a question about definitions, words, and, and things like that. Totalitarian majoritarianism it's, it's, is democracy it's, is inconsistent okay, with totalitarianism. Okay, okay, so what you call majoritarianism, I would call illiberal democracy. Okay, and we are talking, we are, then we are on the, the same Lynch page. Mob, then right? we are on the same No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 I just wanted. Well, come on, we can make jokes, but no, then you will, you will... I, I was actually adding to your argument. Okay, but you would not understand... The lynch mob why in the south, the deep south of the United States was in a majority, and they wanted okay. to kill the blacks no, no, who no, were in the minority. It was the example of totalitarianism. Uh, okay. It's like Yannis, Yannis, I'm adding to your argument. I, I would agree with you, and I would like to have so, like... Um, nice, comfortable situation where we can only say we're the same. I actually did it at the beginning when I said Ukrainians and us is the same. You and I and everybody understand that we should, we have the same aim, we have the same citizen, civil rights and everything. I agree with this, okay? We should be free in, a, in the same so way. So you believe in the national I character? Only, I'm only, no, I'm so only saying... you believe saying, in, in, in no, different okay, DNA you, as well? Listen, if you want to understand why people like Orban or Kaczynski mm -hmm. or Klaus or Fico, and I, meant, I mentioned f or Zeman, four, four leaders of four countries, if you want to understand why they won in those countries and maybe wouldn't want in France, Germany, or... Right, just wait. <laughs> Listen, just wait. I can wait, but I only know that they won there, okay? And Orban has 57 or 53% in the, in the, you know. So he really has, he is a really democratically elected, but he's not liberal in the sense of constitutional liberal. He doesn't uh, respect the rule of law, the freedom of speech, and so on, okay? But that's not because the Hungarians are different. I'm not saying they're different, but listen, if you don't want to have another iron curtain in Europe, you must understand that 60 years of communism changed political culture, political, social, and or social capital that exists in this country. It really is really different, okay? And if we want to integrate with the rest of Europe, it means that we have some obligations as for social bonds. We are maybe more atomized. If you compare Donetsk with Wrocław and, let's say, Lvov, three cities, one is Eastern Ukrainian, Western Ukrainian, and Poland, you see that Lvov is in the midway from Donetsk and Wrocław. And the way the kilometers are in social capital. People organize there differently like uh, they organize here. Social movement, but if you... Listen, because what was the problem? What was <laughs> the problem? Okay. Okay. Just, just one, quick, one, one, one sentence one more. One closing remark. <laughs> the problem was that social protest didn't turn to social movements. If you want to stick to social protest, I, I, if you don't want it, then really think about you know, social bonds among those people. And it's pretty different in Eastern Europe. I'm sorry, I wouldn't like it to be... I would like to be like in Western Europe, but it's not. I think we have Valentina, and then I give you a chance to restart on this conversation yeah. from a slightly different angle. No, I Valentina. started from just, you know, some ideas uh, completely not leaked. But, I mean, uh, the, you was mentioning Brochlav. I say that the point is that the capital is organized in the same way because I was in Brochlav uh, for a three years reasons. And I can say that the, the use of the overtime, the use of the working condition against, you know, making, you know, dumping inside the EU. Because the point is that the European Union has been founded on internal dumping, on economic and on fiscal, on fiscal reason, on trade unions' rights, on 
So the point is also that there's been not simply banned democracy, it's banned the rights, I mean, and you can be from Greece, of our collective bargaining. So yes. is that an, an European issue, the attack on rights on labor? I think it is. So the point is that also there, you, Ukrainian pe person has, are used in temporary agency to decrease, uh, to make dumping to the Poland. So I think that the point uh, in this, I think that, um, there is other to input about the fact that, uh, no, that the, which link within national and European. The point is the use that the Europe has done by the nation of the the govern the, the government nation because I've something that ma that you know makes me mad in this moment is the use of Europe is done in the gov the Rancis government. So it's simply using Europe for a national revenge. There's no capability at all to have alliance political alliance. If you look at Holland, if you look at Renzi, if you look at you know the the power to message that uh, from Greece was launched, it was actually, it was not, I think uh, you didn't uh, <coughs> expect it to change the things simply, you know, starting from Greece. The point it was how to enlarge the fronts of resistance, how to enlarge the, the alliance that you didn't find. Because uh, the point is not where, you know, Greece failed, the point is where the, the, all the rest of Europe failed. So where was the lack of, of the alliance? And it is the thing that also speaking about the social and the, the labor uh, aspect. And uh, let me give, I mean, I, I, I know it's difficult to try to arrive to a uh, common, uh, you know, use of the term of democracy. But if I look of, uh, of a trade union point of view, I see democracy as it was a tool to give, you know, a space, a balance between the interest of the capital and the restraint of the person. So the point is that institutions are drawn by the forces. So the point is that now the, the forces, the main forces is the one of the capital. So the point is not uh, I, I, when we are discussing about making alliance, we're discussing about uh, building power. So building a counter power. So the point is how that how we, ca we can link the experience of the 50th of May in, uh, in, uh, in Spain, how we can link you know, the, the, this summer in Greece, how we can link the labor movement in Italy, how we can link all this together, and how we can support the need for participation of person. Because the democracy is there, I mean, it's just the need to be part of the process. It's, so th it's only a question of build a counter power, build a power that could draw different institutions. Because the institution, simply institution, if you mean, I mean, just to give a look of the proposals that are inside the, the, the TTIP, with the, you know, supposed to be uh, before, you know, that they have to consult before multinationals, before you are introducing, you know, a let, let, let's, talk, let's talk ab about this, starting with Marisa. How do you rebuild power in a continent that is fragmented uh, along geographical basis, it's fragmented along social basis, uh, it is founded on social dumping? Um, in a context, and I think we have to be very honest to ourselves, where the last years of crisis have showed us a tragic failure of political parties and trade unions mm -hmm. to campaign and politically act at transnational level. We haven't seen the emergence of a real European left political actor able to campaign at European level beyond the reciprocal vetoes uh, of individual national member parties, which with each one of them trying to maintain their national autonomy and collectively all of them maintaining a tragic impotency. The same discourse is not very different when we look at the way that the European Trade Union Confederation works. And if anything, the same mechanism of national vetoes that we critique in the European Council, mm -hmm. we find replicated at our own level with our own political practices in European parties and in European trade unions. I want to ask you if you agree with that analysis and what do you see as the future of the party form at transnational level in Europe for the left in particular? Uh, I, I partially agree. There's no, I, I don't agree totally, but I think that you, you have a point. I partially agree because um, I was listening uh, to, to Valentina and I was thinking about the, the, the discourse that the, the all the narrative around European institutions in Europe, sometimes we also fall in the trap of saying, okay, we could do this, we could do that, but they do this and they do that. And, uh, and that's, uh, I think that some of those dimensions did, which did kill some, some space for, for, for more proactive democracy. Of course, I'm, I'm being member of an European party, left party, and being <laughs> vice chair of the European left party. That's I, why I'm asking you. <laughs> yes, I know, I know. You just just like to point the finger. And I, say, also point, ah! I also point at Yanis, uh, it's no, coming up. <laughs> but saying this, of course, is not perfect. We have a lot of things to do, and we have to think a lot about our uh, the way we are 
putting our politics into practice. We are, nevertheless, if we have all the networks with the trade unions, with the social movements, if you have non-existent social movements in some countries, it's very difficult, or in <laughs> some, some areas, it's very difficult to, to, to create these kind of bridges. But, okay, I, did, I think that we, or, we all are needed, and we need, as I said, to rebuild ourselves in such a way that we can make a joint a joint coalition of uh, movements and forces and parties in order to really start to put democracy and politics again in the center, in the core center. And we don't need to, to find a new invention like the wheel. We have the workers' rights, we have the welfare state, we have things that we all have in common. But what, my, what I'm afraid of, and that's something that, okay, it can be thought of like a kind of self-critique, but I, 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 would def I will defend my party till the end, nevertheless. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what I think is that we cannot, at the same time, always try to put something forward, like to say, now we need a new movement, a, a new party or something, uh, and to put it at the European level, international level, no matter level, uh, and use it as a way also to justify our failures at national level. Because sometimes it can be also an excuse, and I'm talking about myself as well, I'm not talking about uh, anyone else. I think that's something that we need to really think in a, deep and, in a deeper way. Why are we always uh, yes. putting aside? Because all of these things also, in my perspective, are the outcome of, nation, of our failures, of the things that we didn't... Uh, manage to, to, to make a success. And so sometimes it's also easier to think it in a broader uh, scale, although we need it, and I think we, we need it, but also masking um, some of the failures that we have when we cannot do it at the national level. Yes, you cannot say it, and you probably don't want to say it, but I can. The feeling that I get when people like uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon or Oscar Lafontaine attack the EU and uh, try to advocate for a retrenchment beyond uh, national boundaries is that uh, it appears to me that trying to justify their failure to win consent nationally and the incapacity of a certain left to be majoritarian or at least influence national political debate in the countries they come from. Uh, that is uh, obviously only my view, but uh, I pointed at you as a representative of, of GUE over the European no, left, uh, but I'm also pointing at Valentina as, as, a, as a trade unionist. <laughs> Let me give you this kind of answer. I think that if you make a struggle, you can win or you can lose. The point is that we didn't have any kind of struggle as uh, European trade unions until now. So the point is that we resigned to our role. So I think we are in a very turning point. I mean, it's not to point the, the finger, you know, in face of someone, uh, because um, <laughs> it's very easy to sometimes, <laughs> as, as we do it with European you know, institutions, to say that uh, European trade unions, it's a failure. It's not that the point. The point is that we were the first point in which was we, we should have recognized the process. It was easier than for the politics one. So we should be the first to react collectively. And we were not able because we were, we were you know, um, in a certain way, try to find the balance. Uh, and so the point, I think we are on a starting, uh, on a turning point, in which the point is, which, how do you intend the role of trade unions? So do you think that you have simply to look at the you know, interests of your members or you have to play a social role? And if you look today at the issue of migrants, as you look at the, you know, in, in the past years of the integration of the East countries in Europe uh, with the, the Balkanstein Directive, huh? I mean, it, it could be crazy, the comparison, but in a, somehow it's real because you are facing the fact that you have to, you know, um, react and take a clear position and simply say that uh, you have to have the, you know, to be brave and to find the link between the fact that the austerity and the migrant movement are linked. That there is, you know, it's uh, in a certain way challenging the European basis and you have to be an actor of this, a social actor. You cannot simply say that you don't want, you know, migrants to arrive and simply make another dumping inside the European Union. So the point is which role you want to, pay, to, to play. And in this, I think that the point is to reinvent the idea of solidarity. Because any times we say solidarity in Europe, it seems to be something humanitarian. It not this, is, it's not this is the point. Uh, the solidarity is how to reinforce the fact that person, the people uh, around Europe are the same. I mean, that I have the same problem that the Greeks have, of the, the Portuguese 
is that. So the point, I mean, you know, if you're a trade union, so you're obliged to be very practical because if you go in the factories and you're starting to make, you know, <laughs> any kind of uh, common uh, analysis, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's becoming complicated. So the point is the, 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 the attack on the, the, also the changing of the, the workforce yeah, so with the attack of the, of the welfare. So they are trying to, to change the, 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 you know, our rights. And so the point is how to recollect them and how to face the challenges we have to say that, okay, we need the, mobil the, the right to be you know, um, free to move internally and externally in the European unions, yes, but we do also have the need to have, you know, the rights circulating inside. So sure. we need to have a common, a common strategy on basic income, on freedom of education, of, basic, of, of minimum salary, of the fact that it cannot be banned the right to social bargaining, to do collective bargaining inside the European Union. So the point is we have to reinvent the solidarity, reinforcing from the beginning the fact we should have a path among the person. So how to we can support the idea of a European demos and I, I go with you in, in this direction. So the point is that we, it was based on the freedom of trade and the freedom of person. Now we are putting in cause also the fact that person can move inside the European and they can <laughs> arrive from outside. So uh, quick uh, sentence uh, by Melissa, uh, then I promise that would take Just quick Giannis because well. uh, um, is, is linked to what uh, you were saying that in fact, there's no democracy without people. There's no, <laughs> we cannot <laughs> put politics back into the center without people as well. And either from the political party side or from trade unions, when we look, reality changed a lot. And when I said before to go back to the concrete problems of uh, regular people, is because for instance, if trade unions do not represent precarious workers, or do not, we have a major problem of unemployment. If the majority of European pe people are not even interested in parties or to listen about it, so probably uh, we, we need to do much more on this. When I, but but I, 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 I still keep uh, the, the sentence when I say I just, I'm just, I don't know if we miss the point at some point <laughs> uh, by just multiplying uh, the things that we already know or try to put it um, as an additional way uh, instead of trying to recover our failures, honestly. And where does DiEM come in this? I mean, you, you, you outlined this crazy ambition of actually building political force, which doesn't mean building a political force, but means rebuilding the capacity to act and to influence policy making, decision making, political and media processes, in fact, at, at transnational scale. Um, but where does that come with a reflection on the party form at transnational level, or indeed mm -hmm. the, the form of, of trade unions? And what is the ambition? of Diem uh, in mm -hmm. cooperating or innovating on that, on that form? <laughs> well, th the answer to, your, to this question is utterly linked with the answer to your, pre to your previous question. Uh, that, 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 that we had articulated. Look, from an economic point of view, 2008 was our generation's 1929. The architecture of European capitalism could not sustain that huge force, earthquake force, that hit us from the other side of the Atlantic. And we started fragmenting like after 1929. Uh, in 1929 it was a gold standard, now it's the Eurozone and the single market that is crumbling because it didn't have the shock absorbers to absorb it. And our leadership, both at the national level and at the European level, are hapless and clueless and they have no, no idea and they are just making things up as they're going along. It's a comedy of errors for seven years now. Every decision is worse than the previous one, more inane. But what can DiEM do about well, this? The, 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 Beyond the, the analysis, because I really no, this, this am not afraid analysis. of political movements no, pretending wait, to be think tanks. Wait, but hang on a second. Hang on a second. Before you get to that, look, maybe DiEM, I promise we'll pick maybe DiEM <laughs> will prove <laughs> historically relevant, but what I'm telling you now is not. Because we have a representative of the trade unions. The trade unions are shrinking in Europe. They are going fast into oblivion. Why? Because labor isn't working, as Thatcher used to say. Because labor is being demeaned, devalued in a race to the bottom. And the reason for that is because an investment has reached the lowest level in Europe for 50 years as a result of the fragmentation I was telling you about. So it's all about investment. Without investment, there are no jobs. Without jobs, there are no trade unions. Without trade unions, there are no movements. Okay? And without 
uh, any means of managing this crumbling economy. There can be no sovereignty at the level of the national government or the European Union. It's all a complete uh, failure, a coordination failure. So what do we do about this? And this, is, this was my introduction, my warm-up to, to the answer. The only way, oh, as you put it in your splendid introduction of um, uh, responding to this situation, the post-2008 European world, is by avoiding the sirens of the nation state, of retrieving, re retrieving this false sense of security inside the bosom of the nation state, and confronting the architecture of a cartel-like European Union, because that's what it was. It was set up as a cartel. It wasn't set up as a transnational state, the European Union. How do you do it? We cannot do it on the basis of starting an organization, a trade union, uh, a movement, or a political party in one country, making promises to our people, I to the Greeks, you to the Italians, Marisa to the Portuguese, and then getting elected on the basis of these promises, and find ourselves in government but not in power. If that is not, if this system of, of doing politics at the level of the nation state is finished, as I think it is, then what is the alternative? The alternative is to organize a democratic movement for reclaiming the levers of power which are necessary to end this fragmentation. And that can only be done at the European level. So this is what DiEM does. The manifesto is just a piece of paper. The purpose of which is to act as a gatekeeper, to keep out the racists, to keep up those who want to, re to return to, to, to their national currencies ne necessarily, to keep out those who want uh, to erect barriers to the refugees or to the Poles or the Ukrainians. This is what it is. It's a, a gatekeeping sure. exercise in order to bring people in. And, and, and allow me just a few, couple of minutes, or one, no, one no, minute couple, more. No. <laughs> 30 seconds? Yes. Okay. I have a straight question for you as well. In order, in order to create, turn the manifesto into a movement and bring everybody together, the trade unions, the existing movements and so on in this process, we need to focus on three things that will motivate those who are not listening to us today, those who are not in the unions, who are not in the movements, who are not voting for you and me. Uh, and we can do this firstly by pointing out to the Poles, to the Hungarians, that there are crucial decisions being made without them knowing about it. And don't you want to know about what your representatives are doing in Brussels? That's a question of transparency. Secondly, to point out to them that the, our central bank, the European Central Bank, our European Investment Bank, our European Stability Mechanism, which have great capacities, are doing precisely the wrong thing, even failing with their own charter. And to say to them, your life in Poland would be better it, as well as the life of the Greeks would be better. At the same time, there is no tug of war here. It's not, it's, it's not a zero-sum game. If they did X instead of doing Y and point out exactly what X is with rational arguments, not just flowery arguments about democracy and so on. So this is the way to act. And this, I think, is important for a, a new movement to do in order to bring everybody into this agenda. And if DiEM is successful in the months ahead, what's different in Europe in 12 months' time? The ECB will no longer be buying boons, uh, pushing interest rates down, destroying pension funds, while at the same time doing nothing to help Spain and Portugal. Uh, the European Investment Bank will have started a, pr um, a new deal, a new green deal for Europe, uh, investing 5% of euro area GDP with EIB bonds that are purchased in the secondary markets by the ECB. We have uh, live streaming of all EU Council meetings and all Eurogroup meetings. We have a publication on the internet of all TTIP. I mean, you ask me, I'm telling you. <laughs> if we're no. successful, this is the, the Europe no, we'll be know, living in. I'm smiling because you are talking about the minutes, and it would be also be a fun. result coming from my country to, to, to have the chance to elect a government because we are on the third <laughs> prime minister That's that right. nobody elects. Exactly. So, I mean, exactly. <laughs> before arriving to the minutes of the European Party, I would be glad to elect someone in my country. So. One last uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, would be nice change. No, no, no. But I think <laughs> we all agree with this. I, I just think. I think that uh, if, if uh, by chance, the, the, if the European reform proves to be to be unviable, I think that the left cannot abandon uh, neither the social nor the economic agenda in the name of a, a, a union, a dysfunctional union or a monetary zone which does not work. So we cannot abandon the, neither the economic nor the social agenda if the reform doesn't happen, and if we don't have uh, this, we'll be out there on the streets. <laughs> yeah. It's very simple. Mm -hmm. You want?
you have a question? <laughs> I am. I'm going to come. I'm going to come with a question. But if you want to intervene, you're more than uh, yeah, on, on this. But uh, le le let me lead to a closing remark with another straight question. We've received many on our Twitter account, so I'm also wanting to give that, uh, that uh, a bit of a voice. And a recurrent question is uh, that of participation. So, what's different in DM, and what are going to be uh, in your in your in your mind? Uh, methods of participating in it and what is going to be the use of new technologies is a question that also comes up. That's a very easy answer, uh, answer to give to your direct question. Anyone gets in, there will be an app application, an app, there will be a website, there is a website, There's, the app will be activated very soon, you just uh, register and immediately you find out who is registered close to you and you invite it to self-organize, it will be completely horizontal, there will be no central committee, no politburo, no top-down anything. Uh, and we are going to have to have multiple decisions being taken at the local level, the municipal level, the regional level of what we want to do. And we're going to have uh, assemblies in town halls, uh, we're going to have the, um, events like tomorrow, but thematic. I want to talk about what we want to do about the PDA crisis, another one about uh, eco policy, economic policy we options. Will <laughs> we will not pay everywhere. We will not pay everywhere. Uh, so the, the, the answer is that this is going to be um, a combination of the digital and the analog. We, we want feet on the ground, we want people in, in uh, theatres and in uh, town halls uh, who are connected digitally, who are connected both locally, regionally, at that level of the nation state and of course throughout the, the European Union and beyond actually. Why leave it to the European Union? Iceland has to come in <laughs> and uh, even Switzerland. <laughs> Close your remark from Turkey. Uh, Let's not leave Turkey out. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. very interesting for me that Kritika Politichna has stayed as a social movement refusing to transform itself into a party, whereas in the last few months we have seen a new party, Razem, uh, organizing from social forces in Poland and competing with national elections. So what's your take from that experience on the discussion we've just had about the relation between social forces and social movements and political representation? Mm -hmm. Well, in the or well, what do you think DiEM should do about it, would be another way of putting it. Well, I like the idea of social movement, uh, not, not, not by chance, because in the globe, you know, when the economy is globalized and politics still not, then actually to have political party doesn't make too much sense, because the left and right is not possible anymore, and you stay with right and wrong, mm. actually. This is what happens more and more in those countries. If, uh, in, if, so if, no, no, but like if you look at what's the difference between left and right in contemporary <laughs> democracies, the difference is diminishing, you know. Actually, the best example is Syriza. If the you know, far left party realizes far right program, then it shows you that only right and wrong is possible. And no, what is it right? It just shows you that it's no longer left wing. Uh, 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 no, come no, on. It but shows okay. a lot of for, things. Okay, you mentioned you Razem. Went to the vote three for times in one year. I mean, for Razem. Something that made the difference. No, no, but for Razem, Syriza was an example. Okay, and Podemos and Syriza are the new hopes of the left. Okay, but if you see, like, when they get they to power to and they realize, <laughs> <laughs> they do. Okay, of course, you can, yeah, I would, I would, I would love to, I would love to, but like, let's face it, the, you, you really disagree that there is still like, you know, concrete left, concrete right, and the real choice. I, I'm, I'm not so sure, like, you know. The, no, I agree with you on this, but th that doesn't mean that there's no difference between left and right, even at the national level. I'm not saying that there is no difference, but the difference is disappearing because what's the economic sovereignty? What's the field of maneuver if you if you get to the position of, of the Minister of Finances? Okay, so many things are dictated. Why 25% of people voted for fi far right parties, for anti European parties? Not necessarily because they loved Marie Le Pen or they loved, you know, UKIP. The only choice they had, everything was decided before the elections. Who gonna be the, the, the in commission? Who gonna be the main fractions? What, how, how many power will it be there? Everything was decided. If you wanted to say proud to yourself as a, as a citizen, the only choice that you got was anti-establishment or establishment, mainstream or anti-mainstream. This is why they got 25%, because this was the only difference on the table, but all right? You're quite right on this. I, this I is why I want to be anti-establishment within the European Union. We have less than one minute, so yeah. fight it out. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I, uh, just to add one thing, I mean, because I, I can agree <coughs> in a certain way that the, the, the difference between left and right is decreasing, but the point is not that they're decreasing the difference, it's decreasing the amount of personal voting for them, because I, I found an enormous difference between a, a love that has been voted in Greece 
Greece and the one that has been voted in Italy. I mean, in, in one side you have, you know, the participation of persons, so you are increasing, you know, the enthusiasm of persons. On the other side you have a government that is supposed to be leftist, but it's, you know, uh, it's been voted by the minority of the majority. So this is the point, is the decreasing of the participation. Last comment, Marisa Yanis, and then I have Let's put it. in a more modest proposal <laughs> <laughs> uh, regarding what is happening in Portugal. Uh, what, what we are trying to do is a, a broader coalition anti-austerity, and, and uh, we should not give up on that, because, of course, I think that we all agree that uh, we should look to Europe as a, a, a question um, an instrumental, an instrumental question, not uh, not, not uh, an end. So, uh, I I would ha love to have a debate on left and right differences, <laughs> honestly. Um, but uh, there are differences. But main main the main issue here is uh, I come to the beginning when I said in my first intervention that uh, we should all be aligned and fighting uh, together for anti-austerity anti policies. And uh, I think that uh, perhaps in the future we will be all together doing this, I hope so. 30 seconds, Yanis. Two points. Firstly, there isn't that much austerity happening. The Protestant ethic, the idea that you spend less when things are tough, which is terrible macroeconomics, but nevertheless, even that is not being used. Um, think about it. I re had to resign because I refused to take 85 billion from the European taxpayers. That, there's no austerity involved in that. This is profligacy. If you look at the hundreds of billions that has been given to Greece, there's no austerity. It's, not, it's, it's class not. war. No, yes, yes. It of is course class it is war. class war. Okay. But but second point, totally because you, you gave me, totally, he gave me 30 seconds. You totally seconds. understood. Yeah, but you totally understood. <laughs> of course and I you understood. bring it, you bring it <laughs> just in the end, uh, yes. when the you cannot come to the it again. second Thank point, you. but I know you agree with me, so <laughs> you don't you. need to come back. Um, that's the first second point. point. Yeah. The, f the, f the second point, very quickly. We need to be able to convince the average um, right-wing supporter of a kind of liberal bourgeois democracy, that what is at stake now is bourgeois democracy in the European Union in exactly the same way as in 1931 and 1932. That in effect, we, are rep we have uh, an establishment in Europe which is repeating exactly the same mistakes of the establishment in 1930, 31, 32. It is madness to expect different results. We need to bring them along with us. And you mm -hmm. have to have the so refugee thing, crisis on the I, I mean, what we can share with neoliberals is economism, okay? Too, th too much think about bonds. If you, I know that you will win with the support of us, the class war. I'm not sure if, if we will win cultural war. This is why you should respect differences. In Poland, there was no recession. In Poland, there are no refugees. All right, so the countries are different. If you want to, you need to avoid fragmentation. I've always, I've always respected think, think not too much about the economy. Especially within countries. Think about culture. The great class war happens within Poland, within Greece, uh, within I Germany. I have to bring this to a close. I will not attempt to sum it up, but I think it's important to leave uh, those watching us with one word, that is ambition. Uh, ambition for change, ambition to go beyond sterile arguments on more Europe or more nation, but an ambition to be able to change both. An ambition to see Europe and return Europe as the place where we can recuperate an extremely ambitious understanding of popular sovereignty, where we can govern the scandal of 62 men controlling half of the global wealth, where we can reimagine a new development model based on ecolog ecological sustainability and impose that through international treaties that would be the opposite of what TTIP represent. Europe as the place where you can free Edward Snowden and you can free Julian Assange and reconstruct a technological infrastructure that is alternative to the dominant one based on surveillance. It is these issues and historical challenges such as these that popular sovereignty should really be about. And what I thought extremely interesting about our debate is that we're not facing simply an exchange of opinions between uh, opinionists or journalists or uh, think tank analysts, but this is hopefully the uh, beginning and the uh, constitution of a political process to try and bring this ambition for change back in the, into the political game at European level. 2015 has been certainly an extraordinary year, 
I think it's, it is very much up to us to make 2016 an even more extraordinary year in the direction that we want to see it going. But thank you all very much, uh, not only for being here, but especially for uh, putting in the passion for change in your respective job professions and activist practices. And thank you, of course, to everybody who has been following us, commenting, sending questions, and will be watching us in the days ahead. Please stay tuned, subscribe to the channel of Talk Real. I have to say that. Uh, <laughs> there will be more, and DM is going to go around Europe to construct a movement. Talk Real already goes around Europe to connect social movement, policymakers, politicians, and radical intellectuals, and continue tuning at least to both. Bye-bye. Thank you.